as you can see from the schematic the coloring in process is going quite well and uh, I've reverted back to my normal system which is after the power supply I work on the power amp and this is obviously the uh, power tube the EL84 and everything that's green has been checked components and uh, values and links and everything that's blue namely the capacitors have been uh, swapped over and you can see that just about not just about in fact every capacitor has been changed because they're either leaky or they are completely out of spec so those blue cap caps have all been changed including the uh, uh, cathode bypass cap on the EL84 which uh, instead of 50 microfarads was reading something like 90 and I didn't and the ESR was very high so I put in a new one in there and what I found the reason I'm normally I would actually do quite a bit more before I came back and recorded this but the reason I'm doing this is because of something I found here which actually links up to a video I've done recently um, and let me show you let me get close up and show you what I mean if you see what I've painted so far and what I haven't it might give you a clue this line here which comes out of that potentiometer and goes up to the uh, EB, EABC 80 okay that thing there is the volume pot now the volume pot signal that comes out of here that's the audio at a very low level before it goes into the preamp so this part here this line here is obviously susceptible to pickup of noise and one would uh, obviously mark this out as a, a line that has to be very carefully shielded or uh, positioned in the chassis in a way that doesn't pick up noise from the surrounding uh, voltages and, and, and components. Now, let me show you what they've actually got here and you'll see why this is a problem. This view is about as good as it's going to get in terms of uh, showing you what it is I want to show you. And it is, I want to show you that 22 microfarad, nanofarad capacitor that links to the, uh, to the EABC80. So from the volume pot, which is there, you see this red wire? That is a straight wire that goes through there, goes through a hole in the chassis, comes out there, and it links to this blue capacitor that I'm squiggling here. And it goes then to the pin on the EABC80. So... What you have here is wire, capacitor, and wire all the way to the wiper of the potentiometer, the volume pot. Okay. Now, for a line which is supposed to be pretty well shielded, this thing has got nothing. This is just wire. This thing is picking up every bit of noise that it can, precisely at the lowest point in the AF uh, circuit. And I say the lowest point because although most of these points here should be shielded for example the signal coming into the top of the pot has got a higher level than the one coming out here if you put this thing at low volume this is your AF at very low volume it's a very very small signal so any noise pickup will be quite high compared to the signal so this thing here as far as noise is concerned this is a noise strap this is an antenna for noise into the AF circuit now, what I decided to do is, instead of just replacing that capacitor, I decided to add some shielding. And the way I'm doing it is with this thing. What I've got here is, I have a 22 nanofarad capacitor in here, which is exactly the value that it needs for there. This is the one leg of the 22 nanofarad capacitor. This thing is going to connect to the wiper of the potentiometer. This thing coming out here is connected to a shield of uh, aluminium tape that I have around the capacitor itself and also a shield to a little bit of shielded cable that I have here. So this cable, this wire, the red wire you see over there, that's the wire itself that connects to that point of the capacitor. The other connection to the capacitor is this other red one. And this wire here is connected to the shield over the capacitor and the shield that is shielding this wire over here. So I've basically created a shielded link with a capacitor at the end to um, try and reduce any noise pickup on that part of the circuit, which I'm sure is there.
Now, I have done a video on creating, making these shielded capacitors. Um, in uh, the previous restoration that I did, I had two or three, I think it was, that I had to make because you can't buy these anymore. So if you're interested, I'll link it above. And it actually just shows you how I make these uh, shielded caps. So what I'm going to do is swap out that capacitor with this one and carrying on with the painting job. So here we have the capacitor tied in. That's the red one going to the wiper. And this shield wire, if I don't connect this anywhere, it's doing nothing. So what I need to do is connect this to a ground point. And I found that this particular lug on the pot, this one over here, on the side, away from this one, that is a ground. That's connected to the ground. So by soldering that in there, I'm actually shielding the entire line that goes from the volume pot all the way to the uh, input of the uh, EABC-80. And that's it. We've got ourselves a shielded wire, shielded capacitor with a shielded wire. While in the process of working backwards uh, from the output back to the uh, audio input stage, um, I've replaced, as you can see here, quite a few more components since the last time. Uh, everything that's painted green has been checked. And I now have the system complete from the input of the pickup, which means we can test the power amp all the way through to the output. And we'll be testing that in a minute. But I just want to point out something here. As you can see, this, uh, this thing is marked in red. Now, according to the schematic, what we have here is from this coil. Now, this is the discriminator coil that uh, on the uh, on the FM section we have this resistor and that resistor and these two resistors go to the two opposite ends of one of those diodes inside the ABC80 and what we have here is the 270 ohms 270 ohms so far so good the problem is that when I found the components on the radio and I was checking the values. I found that there's actually a component that's wrong. This resistor in the radio is actually a 100 ohm resistor. And I couldn't see the value on the resistor itself, so I removed it and checked it. And it is indeed marked as 100 ohms, and it measures exactly 100 ohms. So what we have here is what is supposedly a balanced circuit you should have these two balanced. That's how you end up balancing the, uh, the discriminator coil. Has actually got two different value resistors, 270 and 100. Now, because I checked that resistor in the radio and it's uh, checking out fine, I've left it in. I've just made a note here that this could well be the reason why the FM is not picking up well. But I don't want to jump to that conclusion just yet because this thing is obviously there since day one. It's original. It's the same make uh, resistor, it's the same uh, shape, it's the same style. Uh, there were no signs that it's a replacement. So it looks like it's been there since the factory. And this thing obviously worked on FM since the factory. But now we're finding that our FM is very, very distorted and very weak. So it could well be a problem with the tuning, with the uh, alignment of that coil. And the problem with that alignment could well be the fact that uh, the resistors are not balanced. But we'll check that at the end. So, so far what we have is we have the AF section completely done. The amp is completely done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a signal and see what we get. So we'll start off with the 100 millivolt peak to peak signal at 1 kilohertz out of the signal generator. That signal is connected to the pickup input. I've connected on the inside as you can see. I have for a start I have the speaker connected on here, the external speaker, and the radio is on with the pickup selected. And as you can hear, as I put the volume up, there's our signal. And it sounds quite clean. However, sound can be a little deceptive so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the speaker with a dummy load 
and put this on the oscilloscope. I've got my dummy load ready here. It's uh, this, these resistors, 5.6 ohms. I've got the oscilloscope connected across them and I'm going to replace the speaker with a dummy load. But before I do that, I switch off the radio. Should never run this without any load at all. So now our dummy load is connected. Put the radio back on. And we'll see what we get on the scope. Put the volume up. There it comes. So what we have here is we've got the volumes on full. And I'm reading 308 millivolts RMS. It looks pretty clean. It's a one kilohertz sine wave. Um, it's not clipping, which means that my input signal of 100 millivolts is not high enough to clip. So we want to see how much power we're getting out of this clean power at one kilohertz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on some more light bulbs. So we take off the or as much of the limiting as possible and you see the result. When I reduce the current limiting, my voltage output, the swing, is actually more than doubled. So we're at to, up to 720 millivolts or, uh, peak, uh, RMS. That's 2.1 volts peak to peak. I'm going to bypass the um, dimmer limiter. See if it makes any difference. It shouldn't make much of a difference. Just slightly. So we have no limiting on now. Now, there are a few things that can affect the signal. Uh, at one kilohertz, we have our base control, which still affects it. Okay, so I'm putting that on max. And our treble control affects it as well. It's a little bit dirty, as you can see. So I'm putting that on max. Okay. So we're actually at one volt RMS and no clipping. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the amplitude of the input signal. Let me drop that a little bit so we can see it more clearly. And I'm increasing it at 10 millivolts at a time. We're up to 230. Let me reduce that again. We're seeing a little bit of distortion on the, on the sine wave. See the top there? That's starting to get distorted and there it's actually going straight into clipping at the top. So if I bring it down, that's about where we get no clipping. And it seems fairly clean. That's better. 250 millivolts peak to peak coming in and we've got 2.4 volts RMS output. So that means if we do the maths, we should be able to work out what the maximum power is on this. Now bear in mind, this maximum power is across a resistive dummy load of 5.6 ohms, not across a speaker. Okay, the characteristics of the speaker could be different. The impedance of the speaker at one kilohertz could be lower or higher. So this is not really a true reflection of the output power, but it gives us a good idea. Okay, what it does tell us though, is that our, our audio system of the radio is now complete with all the changes that we've made, which is great. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so next step is to move back into the actual RF stages and change a few more components and um, test the rest of the components. And then we can start working on the actual RF, which as you by now know, as far as the uh, AM is concerned, it seems to be fine. But as far as the FM is concerned, we certainly still have a challenge. But I think, uh, well, that will come next. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that and see you back soon.